Good morning. Lord have mercy. This is very loud. I'll speak a little more softly. A welcome to St. James. <clears throat> to our <clears throat> service of morning prayer this morning, if you're joining us uh, via the internet, we welcome you to our worship service. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins to God. We confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O oh God, let our mouth proclaim your praise and your glory all the day long. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. God is the rock of our salvation. O come, let us worship. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. God is the rock of our salvation. O oh, come, let us worship. The psalm appointed for this morning is found in your bulletin. <clears throat> Let us read this together. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. My hand will hold him fast, and my arm will make him strong. No enemy shall deceive him nor any wicked bring, bring him down. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and love shall be with him, and he shall be with us through my name. I shall make his dominion extend from the great sea to the river. He will say to me, You are my father, my rock, and the rock of my salvation. I will make him my firstborn, and higher than the kings of the earth. I will keep my love for him forever, and my covenant will stand firm for him. I will establish his line forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. If his children forsake my law, and do not walk according to my judgments, if they break my statutes, and do not keep my commandments. 
I will punish their transgressions with a rod and their iniquities with a lash, but I will not take my love from him nor let my faithfulness prove false. I will not break my covenant nor change what has gone out of my lips. Once for all, I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His line shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall stand fast forevermore like the moon, the abiding witness in the sky. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading this morning is a lesson from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands, remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one, and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body, through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundations of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel appointed for this morning is out of the book of Mark, and it's two sections out of the sixth chapter. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, 
And they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. <clears throat> well, my name is Blix Winston. I'm one of the four who was asked to uh, uh, lead the uh, morning worship service while Kristen is away on vacation, and we pray and trust that she's having a good time with the boys and uh, that it's a relaxing time for her. Um, <clears throat> when I looked at these two readings, the gospel and the epistle, I scratched my head for a long time. You know, how, how can I address this? You know, what, what should we call attention to? And uh, so at the start, I would like to say to you, Good morning, fellow Gentiles. Now, I don't believe anyone here is Jewish. Uh, one of our former beloved members, uh, Lou Pfefferkorn, uh, was Jewish, um, but I think that he was our only member who was. But we are Gentiles. Now, what does that mean? It's a loaded term, I think. Uh, and Paul talks about it here in the epistle. Remember that at one time, you Gentiles by birth, remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Well, that does not sound like a lot of fun. Uh, but remember, this is written uh, back when there was a very clear demarcation between Jews and Gentiles. Jews did not speak to Gentiles. They did not help Gentiles. They were prohibited from doing so by the rules uh, by which they were supposed to live. And there was actually a fairly strong enmity between uh, those on one side, the Gentiles, and those on the other side, the Jews. Now, this was a very small nation, but they had an outsized influence on the world. So with, uh, when Jesus came, um, he started to break down the barrier. Now, this was not a, a welcome message, and he had to do, he had to do so uh, only by illusion at first. Uh, if I think that if he had said, I have come to bring all Gentiles and Jews together, he probably would have been stoned immediately. There was, there was such strong enmity between the, the two groups. And yet, uh, this is what uh, St. Paul talks about in this epistle. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one, and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. If you think about this from the perspective of history, and then think about who we are as Gentiles, if we did not have Christ, we would have no hope. Now, what is this hope? The hope is to be able to draw near to God. 
the Jews can draw near to God because of the covenant that God made between Israel and himself. But that did not extend to the Gentile world. And so this is what Paul talks about here. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, strangers to the covenants of promise. The covenant of promise had been made with Israel, having no hope and without God in the world. Like I said, when you th think about that, it's pretty glum. Uh, it does not sound very promising at all. <clears throat> now, going back to the gospel, uh, I want to focus on uh, one part of the first paragraph. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd. Now, he said, in, initially he says to the dis disciples, come away to a deserted place. They had been out working, they were tired, they were worn out. I think that Jesus was perpetually exhausted by all the demands that were made on him. And so he and the disciples were looking forward to a, a little bit of rest in a somewhat deserted place. But <clears throat> the place where they went across the, the sea was about four miles. If you go by land, it's about 10 miles to the spot where they landed the boat. Uh, if the winds are real good, you can get do those four miles fairly quickly, but if you have to tack back and forth, it'll take a while. So people recognized where he was going, and they went the 10-mile walk, or run, if you will, around to the place where they knew that the disciples and Jesus were going to land. So when he comes ashore, rather than there being no one there so that they can uh, rest and sort of recuperate, Here's this immense crowd clamoring for him. And what was his response? It wasn't irritation, apparently. He had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. Well, we know from our reading of the scriptures that uh, Jesus said to his disciples, I believe it was at the Last Supper, uh, I have many things still to teach you, but you cannot bear them now. And so over the process of time through the Holy Spirit, the Lord has continued to teach. Christianity isn't dead, it's alive. It's an, a living thing. So <clears throat> here they are on shore. The people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever he was. So this poor man never had, I think, a, a moment's rest, except when he could go away someplace in the middle of the night where, when everybody was asleep. That was the only time he could get his rest. So now Paul uh, really touches on, the, to, to me, the essence of the gospel. Uh, in this letter to the Ephesians. What he is saying is that Jesus came not just for those who are near, and that's a term that refers to the Jews, but to those who are far off, which is a term that refers to the Gentiles. He came not just to fulfill the promise to the Jews, but also to open and, and bring those who were far off, which is the Gentiles, which is us, close so that we could have access to God. To me, this is the, the very heart of the gospel. Through Jesus, we have access to God. Without Jesus, we have no access to God. If Jesus had been a philosopher, his sayings would still be studied. Uh, he would be revered as a wise teacher, and indeed, many people consider Jesus to be a wise teacher, but not the Son of God, not the Messiah. But he was the one. He was the fulfillment of the promise. So, as it says in the Gospel, so he came and proclaimed, peace to you who were far off. 
That's us. And peace to those who were near. That's Israel. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. That's the good news. That something happened with, when this man came here. Something happened that had never happened before to us who were far off. All of a sudden, we have a hope. Now, we're so used to thinking about that as, as Christians and living with it that we say, oh yes, uh, we have the hope of salvation. It's very familiar to us. But put yourself back a couple of thousand years or put yourself back ten years ago if you have recently <laughs> become a believer, you, you, we, didn't have any hope. This is why it's such good news. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God. If that isn't a reason to start jumping up and down and hollering and whooping and saying, Hallelujah, I don't know what is. So thank you for uh, your patience and listening, and thank you for coming this morning, and we'll continue with our service. Continuing on page four, let us stand as you're able and say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Help us, O God, our Savior. Look upon your congregation. Declare your glory among the nations. Do not let the oppressed be shamed and turned away. Never forget the lives of your poor. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you and your favor to those who are true of heart. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. Rejoice. The Collect. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. Intercessions and thanksgivings. Uh, I invite you to offer prayers of intercession or thanksgiving silently or aloud. We offer intercession for those affected by the flooding in Europe, for those affected by the uh, excessive heat that we're experiencing in this country, and those who are being affected by this new version of COVID. We give you thanks for drawing us who were far off near to the family of God. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, the only announcement of which I'm aware is um, that the, our basket raffle and silent auction is going to be held on Saturday on the uh, 25th of September at the Mount Airy Oktoberfest. Um, there's an insert in the bulletin that speaks about that. Uh, are there other uh, announcements or things that need to be shared with the community? No? All right. Thanksgivings of the community. Um, <clears throat> you're offered to give thanks uh, at this time. Uh, if you have an anniversary or a birthday, uh, we would like to celebrate that with you. Uh, if there are other things that you would, uh, other grace-filled changes in your life, we invite you to share those as well. And let us join in the prayer. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they mark this day. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat>